Hello. Uh, I want to talk today uh, about uh, a topic that's very um, in the news right now. Today is what uh, April 21st, 2020, and we're right in the middle of the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak. And there's been a lot of discussion about trying to test individuals, uh, particularly doing what's called antibody testing, to def discover uh, the number of people in the community who have potentially been exposed or infected with the virus, try to figure out if there's a way to determine if those people have already had the virus and are unlikely to get it again. Um, and there's an, a lot of important details, uh, I think, that are getting lost in this discussion. I want to make something very clear. I'm not a virologist. I don't study viruses for a living. Uh, I'm a psychologist, behavioral scientist. Um, I study behavior for a living. Um, most importantly, uh, the uh, signal de detection analysis um, that I'm about to discuss is something I've done uh, a number of times, or I should say a great deal, and I've talked about a great deal in my courses uh, because the math behind this doesn't matter what test we're talking about. If we're talking about a hearing test, breast cancer screening, um, calibrating sonar in a submarine, which is how this math was developed in the first place, um, all of these are detecting a signal amongst the noise. And essentially, the signal we're trying to detect are people who have had uh, a COVID-19 infection. And the noise we're trying to get through is the body's antibody response to every other virus it's ever been exposed to in its life. So that being said, I want to talk through how um, we talk about test accuracy. And as I said, this applies to pretty much trying to detect the presence or absence of anything. <laughs> um, we talk about this in terms of um, airport screeners, trying to detect whether or not you might have a gun in your bag, um, back you know when we could go places, um, or uh, a, a military radar, trying to determine the difference between a stealth fighter and a bird. Uh, all of these uh, involve the same math. I'm gonna use a simple example to start off with. Uh, you probably all had your hearing tested at some point. And you sat there with those headphones on and strained to hear faint, high-pitched, and low-pitched beeps. Um, and so essentially, these are the four possibilities. The signal in that case is whether or not the tone was pre present or not. And the response is, did you hear it? Did you say to the person testing you, yes, I hear something, or no, I didn't? In grade school, I think we raised our right hand or left hand, depending on which ear we heard the tone in. Now. If a present, the, the signal is present and you heard it, we would call that a hit. If the signal was present and you did not hear it, we would call that a miss. If the signal was not present, but somehow you heard it, and this happens a lot of times as you're straining to hear something, um, you might hear a, just hear a tone in your random neural noise, we would call that a false alarm. And then finally, when you say you don't, didn't hear anything and there was nothing to hear, we would call that a correct rejection. Now let's take the same framework and apply it to an antibody test. <clears throat> so, first possibility is a test returns a, po returns a positive revolt, the results, sorry, in an individual who was uh, infected with COVID-19. Uh, so they have antibodies circulating um, and they've had an infection before, or possibly even an infection now. We would call that a hit. Important to identify these individuals. Obviously, if they're still infectious, that's an important question. Uh, also important to try to learn the um, base rate of infection. That is, what is the percentage of the population that has been infected with um, this particular disease? And also to identify individuals who might have some immunity to the disease, um, because that's another important question. Sorry. Next, we have a negative result in somebody who has not been infected or not been, not had any antibody, sorry, has not had an infection, so they have no antibodies to the test. That would be a correct rejection. So this individual does not have antibodies, and the test says they don't have antibodies. Now, we start getting into the really troublesome areas um, where we have a false positive, where the test returns a positive result in a patient who has not been infected. Now this is gonna do two things. It's gonna overinflate the rate of 
uh, infection in the population. But more importantly, on an individual level, this person might go forth believing that they have antibodies uh, to a disease that they don't actually have. So that's an important consideration. We don't want to send somebody out uh, running amok where they can get infected, get quite ill, and potentially, of course, as we know, die from this particular disease. Our next uh, possibility is a miss, or what we call a false negative. So a false negative result um, will occur when an individual has had COVID-19, has antibodies circulating, but the test returns uh, a result saying, nope, no antibodies present. So it's going to miss that that individual has had this disease. Again, very problematic because now at this point we have um, underestimated the spread of the disease. And now this person, of course, will have to continue taking a great deal of precaution to uh, make sure that uh, they don't catch a disease when, in fact, they may have already had the disease. Now, all of this is to say, uh, at this point, none of the tests uh, that are um, coming out have particularly effective, that is, they have a pretty high false alarm and high false negative rate. And so, as uh, far as I know, they're not doing much individual test returning. Most of this is trying, in some attempt at surveilling the population to try to figure out the spread of the disease. But as this conversation moves forward, these are the issues that I think we're going to have to um, think about. So the next thing I want to talk about is uh, some assumptions about antibody response. This is what we call a frequency plot. Essentially, if you um, plotted out the number of people uh, and their antibody response. So people with a lot of antibodies would be at the right. People with very few antibodies would be at the left. Um, immune system response is very individual. Some people will have a very strong response. Some people a weak response. Um, and uh, there will be some sort of mean around which um, most people will center. So most people will have sort of an average immune response. And so that would be the peak here of this curve because that would be uh, the highest number of individuals would have had um, that average response. Then we get out into the high end, very few people, and at the low end, very few people. Now, this becomes important because for each um, of these kind of antibody tests, they will have to make a decision at which point they have uh, decided to return a positive result. And so essentially they'll establish what's called a criterion. And above that level of antibodies will be a positive test. Below that will be uh, a negative response because essentially they've decided um, that there's probably more noise. Um, because there aren't sufficient number of antibodies, they'll call it a negative test. So now, complicate things up a bit. First thing to understand is most antibody tests are not specific to a single antibody. That is, it's difficult to have something that works, <coughs> a test that will respond only to the antibody specific to COVID-19. You can do it, uh, but uh, as this process unfolds, these will get better and better. Um, but at this point, most of them are likely re returning uh, a high amount of noise. So assuming um, these antibody tests are uh, responding to uh, potentially sort of a group of viruses, and so that group of viruses that aren't COVID-19 would be noise. So these would be individuals who have some antibody level um, that is not COVID-19 but is related. Um, and then this right distribution would be people who have had COVID-19 and had, have COVID-19 antibodies present, um, in addition to the antibodies from um, some other disease. So thinking back to the previous graph, all the way over here at the right will be those people with high antibody tests in the signal plus noise distribution. And then over here at the left will be people who have low levels of antibodies. And then here, sort of towards the middle, we have a set uh, what we call beta, which is the decision criterion at which point the test is going to return a positive result. So anybody above this criteria in the test response is going to, the test is going to say positive. Anyone below that, it's going to say negative. Now what you can see is these distributions overlap a bit. So people are going to have a lot of antibodies, 
that aren't COVID-19. Um, and those people are going to get a positive test result even though they haven't had COVID-19. Then the people who have had kind of a weak immune response, low levels of antibodies, are going to fall below that decision criteria. And as a result, they'll get a negative response, even though they've had the disease. Um, now we talk about D prime, and D prime is a measure that we're not going to dive into in this particular talk, but uh, it is important because the amount of overlap between these distributions is related to D prime. And so the more specific those antibodies become, the further apart these distributions will get. And so as a result, you get decreasing levels of false positives and decreasing levels of false negatives by getting that antibody specificity. So as I said um, previously, that criterion is set to determine when a test is positive, and that's this beta um, that you can see here in the middle. And uh, the thing is, is that is something that can be altered um, somewhat. Again, I'm not a virologist, and diving into antibody testing uh, is um, something that you have to be cautious with. But um, most of these tests, they set a sensitivity level, at which point it's going to return that response. So our next thing, then, is to kind of start to put this all together. So we go back to our hits, misses, correct rejections, and false alarms. So again, here we have a signal distribution and a noise distribution, and then our beta. And in this case, we've set a pretty conservative beta. So remember, this right distribution is theoretically individuals who are infected with COVID-19. And the antibody test is going to return a positive result uh, above the beta level. Um, and so in this case, if you look up in um, section B here, in the upper left-hand quadrant, uh, that red indicates all the people who are going to be missed. And uh, that's obviously a problem because we're going to miss a lot of people who have had this particular disease, grossly underestimating the um, prevalence of this particular disease. Then we go to uh, C, and this shows us the false positives. So these are the individuals who's, who've got noisy antibodies, <laughs> so to speak. So they've got a lot of antibodies that aren't COVID-19 but are something else, and these people are going to get a, probably a false positive result. And uh, that then is uh, going to be a problem. Now, of course, our goal here is to maximize hits and minimize false alarms and misses. The best way to do that is to improve the specificity of the antibody testing. Um, and that's, that's where most people are pushing. The other thing that can be done with these tests is tinkering with sensitivity or bias of the test. So essentially, we can shift the criterion um, to the right or more conservative. That's going to increase the number of false negatives. And as a result, we're going to miss quite a few people who have had COVID-19 or have antibodies. We can also shift it to be more liberal. This is going to result in more false positives. So one of the issues with these tests is without knowing all of the details um, and what false positive and false negative results or rates are, is currently very difficult. Um, so this is where um, we're kind of in the Wild West, but as these tests evolve, these are the important questions to consider. What is the false positive rate? And what is the false negative rate? As we start thinking about using testing and tracking to try to um, get us out of our uh, quarantine phase. Okay, well, I just wanted to introduce this topic, give you a little bit of hopefully useful information about understanding these tests and their accuracy. Um, and using this kind of signal detection analysis we use in psychology all the time.